Okay, welcome back to getting to know you. So at this point now, just to recap, you should be familiar with initializing a Git repository. In other words, turning a folder into a smart folder that understands how to track commits and stuff like that by using Git in it. Then you should also be familiar with how to add files to a staging area and committing those as well, right? Now, one thing I should kind of uh, just kind of simplify a bit the view of this is that when you're committing, the idea is that you're kind of saving snapshots of your repository in time, right? So when you make a bunch of changes and you stage them and you commit them, you can basically view that as you're saving a state of your repository, right? You're, you're saving that state uh, with these changes, basically. You're committing those uh, changes and then that's a new state of the repository, right? It's almost like when you're saving a file, right? Uh, I don't know if you, you guys have dealt with like you know, working with people and you save files over and over again. You have all these different versions of the file, right? This is the same kind of deal. You have all these different versions of the entire repository. That's the idea of Git committing. Now that comes really important when we talk about branching. So branching is an, is an idea that maybe you want to save versions of the repository off in another area that other people don't care about. Okay, that's what branching is all about. And that's what we're gonna talk about in this video. So again, the big reminder is that we're all dealing with our local repository, right? We're all dealing with this one thing on our computer, this folder. There's no idea about connecting to any server or anything like that, including this video. Okay, so the idea of branching is that as you make commits, right? When you go back to your uh, thing here, let me make the text a bit bigger for you guys, maybe it's a lot easier to see. So if I do a git log, right? you'll see that I basically have all these commits that happen, right? Initial commit of instructions, and after that, initial commit of Joe, then Mitch, and so on, right? You have all these commits right here. Initial commit, initial commit of instruction, blah, blah, blah. You have all these commits. And what you're basically doing is you're recording, again, snapshots of the repository, right? And that's what these gray blocks represent, okay? So what I'm doing is, every time I do a commit, I'm recording a block, okay? But let's say now that you want to do some, you know, development off to the side. You want to change some files and you kind of want to do all that stuff off to the side and not really affect anybody else, right? Um, in fact, let's say you have two people working on the same repository and you want, you know, I'm going to work on my own area and have a bunch of commits over there and you're going to work on your area and have a bunch of commits over there and we're not going to affect each other, right? We're not going to look at each other. This is where the idea of a branching comes into place, okay? A branch is almost like a play area. It's, it's your own area where you can do your own thing and the commits won't be seen on the other play area, the other branches, okay? So without you really knowing it, all your commits that you've been doing today are what's called on the master branch. When you initialize a Git repository, the very first thing it creates for you is a default branch called master. So as you do commits, as you do commits, right? You're basically doing all of this on the master branch. In fact, if you do a git status, you'll see it says on branch master, right? Nothing to commit, right? So this, this is where the line of commits happens, right? It's all on this master branch. But git allows you to kind of veer off to a different direction and create a new branch. So let's say I'm gonna create a new branch. I'm gonna take the snapshot in time at this place and go off, take a copy of that code and go off and play in my own area and do my own commits, okay? So when I do my commits over on my own player area and my own branch, master is not gonna see those branch, uh, those commits until I explicitly tell it so, okay? And you can do this with a bunch of branches. You can create one branch over here and maybe create another branch over here where you have a bunch of commits over here. And again, none of these commits will interfere with each other. So you commit over here, this guy won't see anything about this guy. And the same thing with the master, okay? So this is what branches are. They're essentially like play areas um, where you can do a bunch of commits and they won't affect the other branches, okay? All right, so that's what branching is all about. And I'm gonna have to watch the time on this video because I don't know how long this is gonna go. Branching is a pretty big concept. Okay, so let's just do a git status, okay? And we see that we're all up to date, nothing else to be committed or whatever. Now, let's say I wanna make a bunch of changes to README and I don't want them to affect the master branch quite yet, okay? So what I'm gonna do is I'm very first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a branch. So if you type git branch, you can actually see all the branches that are there already. And you'll see master is the only branch that's there right now. Okay? So let's create a branch. We're gonna call it git uh, branch, and then we're gonna create it called red. Okay. Now typically the name of your branch 
are usually things like features or user stories or something like that, right? In this case, I'm just gonna use color code so we can keep track of where we are in this diagram, okay? So get, we can say red feature, okay? That's gonna be the feature name, okay? And let's create a green uh, branch as well. Now typically you would just create one branch, I mean, and work on your stuff. Typically you would not create two branches at once and start working simultaneously on two different branches, but just the illustrative purposes. Okay, so let's try to get branch now. You can see there, green feature, master, and red feature, right? So we have these three play areas now, and the star represents what branch you're currently sitting on. So if you want to switch to a different branch, all you have to do is use the git checkout command. So I'm going to switch to red feature. Switch to branch red feature, okay? So if we do a good branch now, you see I'm on the red feature. Well, let's switch over to the green feature. Okay, and we look at where we are now, and we're on the green feature. Okay, so two important commands I just taught you. Git branch, and then the name of the branch. Okay, and then git checkout, and the name of the branch. Okay, so git branch and the name of the branch, create it get checkout switches to it. Okay, and I'll talk a little bit about switching in a second. Now, by the way, you can do all that in one single command if you want. You can actually do a git branch and then check out directly to that branch in one command. And this is how you do it. git checkout dash b. So what that means is create a new branch and then check out to it, okay? So blue feature, boom. So if I do a git branch, You'll see it's created it and I've switched to it all in one step. Okay, very, very handy command there. All right, so we've created these branches and we've switched to them. Now, here's where if you uh, have previous source control experience, this is where branching might get a little bit confusing for you guys uh, in Git because it's a little bit different. The best way I've heard it described is that when you check out to a branch, you're basically switching contexts, okay? In other words, you're switching to a different play area where all your commands will kind of go with that play area. Now that's a bit vague, so let me put that a bit more concretely. When you switch to a branch, you're basically saying that anything I commit will only be committed within that context, okay? So if I switch to the red feature branch and I do a bunch of commits, those commits will only be in the context of the red feature. In other words, if I switch over to the green feature, I won't actually see any of those commits, okay? If I switch back to the master branch, I won't see any of those commits in the master branch either, right? All your commits only apply to that branch, and that's how uh, branching works, okay? Now, it's a little bit curious, and it's a little bit confusing, to be honest, um, how this works. And so I'm gonna bring up uh, that other uh, that other diagram I had, uh, okay. So remember this diagram about the untracked files and changes, staged files and committed. Okay, so it's nice to have these two diagrams up because they'll help us along here. Okay, so like I said, when you switch to a, a branch, what you're saying is that anything you commit is going to only apply to that branch. Now, the tricky thing here is stage files and untracked files will appear unstaged, sorry, will appear staged and untracked to every single branch. It's only when you commit do they actually apply to a specific branch. Okay, one more time. Any file that sits in here and any file that sits in here, that applies to all branches. Okay, so you have an untracked file and you go to any branch, that's going to appear as an untracked file in all those branches. It's not until you actually commit those files do those changes apply to a specific branch. Okay, so I'll give you an example. All right, let's make some changes here. Let's, let's go to the red feature branch. All right, so in the red feature branch, we're gonna look at the readme file, okay? Uh, so let's go to the readme file and let's add a piece of text here. Okay, 
This is for the red feature only. All right, so now I have a change, all right? I have an untracked, uh, uh, sorry, an unstaged change. So I'm sitting in the blue area. So I'm gonna do get status to see that change is not committed, readme.txt, okay? Now what branch am I sitting on here? I'm sitting on the red feature, right? So the readme.txt in the red feature context and the red feature kind of uh, mindset is an unstaged change. Now what if I switch to another branch? Look, it's still an unstaged change, right? So any branch I go to, this change that I made, it'll look like an unstaged change. So changing a file when you switched out to a branch doesn't make it specific to that branch at that point. Remember what I said, it's only when you commit does it become specific to that branch, okay? So another way of viewing a branch is it's a label to apply your commits, all right? Okay, so let's go back to the red feature branch. All right, so I'm sitting on the red feature branch here. If I look at git branch, yep, red feature. Now let's add the readme file that the change I've made to the staged area. Git add, and I'm just gonna use the shortcut dot in this case. So I look at the status. Okay, now I'm getting a little further. It's in the staged area. You see changes to be committed, so staged area. But let's switch up to another branch and see if what I'm saying is true. Check out green feature status. Look, changes to be committed. So again, any file that sits in the blue area or the staged area, it's going to look that way to all branches. It's not specific to one branch yet. It's only when we commit. So let's actually do that now. Let's go back to the red feature. Okay. And, um, okay, so let, we switch to the red feature and we look at the status modified. Now let's do a git commit. Added some readme text for the red feature. Now, this is where the magic happens and this is where branching gets magical. <laughs> um, when I do this commit, this commit now will be recorded in history. So the files no longer in unstaged changes or stage files but it's only gonna be committed to the red feature branch, the branch that I'm currently on. So I hit enter. Okay, now I wanna do a git status. Look, it's not sitting anywhere, just like any of the other ones, okay? If I go to any of the other branches and I do a git status, that file is gone. It's recorded in history somewhere. Now the question is where in history is it recorded? It's recorded on that red feature branch and I'll prove it to you. Okay, so if I go to the blue feature, which I believe I'm already on here. Yeah, I'm already on the blue feature. And I take a look at that readme file. Look at this. It doesn't have that new line of text there, right? Because on the blue feature branch, that's not the state of the file, right? Let's go to the red feature branch. And look, it's sitting right there, okay? So the really important thing I want you to learn in this first video is that untracked files, unstaged changes and stage files are not specific to a branch. It's only when you do the commit that the branch gets in here. Now, I'm gonna stop the video there because that's a pretty big concept. In the next video, I'm gonna show you exactly what you're doing when you do a git checkout because there's some magic that happens besides and switching the context in terms of what commits actually happen, how did this file actually change, right? Because I'm looking at the same readme file. When I, uh, when I look at it on the red feature or the blue feature branch, how come the file actually changed? And I'll show you that in the very next video. The main thing I want you to get from this video is the idea of branching being a play area or a context. And when you switch that context, it's telling Git where to apply the commits to, okay? All right, on to the next video.